journey with me to Romans chapter number nine. Look at me if you please at verses 30, 31, 32, and 33. Romans chapter number nine, verses 30 through 33. What shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness attain righteousness, even the righteousness which is by faith. But Israel, pursuing the law of righteousness, did not arrive at that law. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith, but as though it were by works. They stumbled over the stumbling stone, just as it is written. Behold, I lay in Zion a stone stumbling and a rock of offense, and he who believes in him will not be disappointed. What shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness attain righteousness, even the righteousness which is by faith. But Israel, pursuing the law of righteousness, did not arrive at that law. Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith, but as gold. Our works. They stumbled over the stumbling stone, as it is written, the whole thy lay in Zion the stone of the stumble, and the rock of all things. And he who believes in him will not be disappointed. And if I could hold your attention for just a moment this morning, I'd like to preach from the subject, how to live in harmony with God. You may have your seats. Thank you very much. I'm sure you're too kind. How to live in Harmony with God. How to live in harmony with God. This past Friday, I decided to treat myself to a night of relaxation by simply sitting on my couch and watching a movie on my TV. The movie of my choice was the 2012 movie Jane starring Jane Fox. In the 2012 movie, Jango, there was a gentleman by the name of Dr. Scholes. Dr. Scholes was a bounty hunter by profession, but he was posing as a dentist. As Dr. Scholes was in search of the brittle brothers who were wanted, whether dead or alive, for an $11,000 reward, he ran into some slave transporters who were transporting a number of slaves, one of which was an African-American slave by the name of Jacob. When Dr. Shows asked the question, does anybody know the brittle brothers, Jango, the African-American slave, lifted his voice and said, I know the brittle brothers because I am a slave from their plantation. Dr. Scholes then made an agreement with the slave transporters to purchase Jango for himself. The deal went down. Now Jango was the slave of Dr. Scholes. Dr. Scholes told Jango that in the event that you assist me 
in capturing the Brittle Brothers, I will in turn give you your freedom. And that's exactly what Dr. Scholes did. Jango assisted Dr. Scholes in capturing the Brittle Brothers, dead or alive, and taking them down to receive his $11,000 reward. After the task had been completed, Dr. Scholes signed the necessary documents to make Jango a free man. In a brief conversation, Dr. Scholes learned that Jango was going to spend the rest of his life trying to reunite himself with his wife, who was a slave on what was called the Candyland Plantation. When Dr. Scholes learned of Jango's ambition, he explained to Jango that he felt responsible for his well-being, and he then made a second agreement with Jango, which said, spend the winter bounty hunting with me, and after the winter season has passed, I will be your mediator to get you down to the Candyland Plantation in order to reunite you with your wife. This was the longest movie I had ever watched in my life. And the trust of the movie was simply showing how Django was reunited with his wife. They went through all of these scenes after scene after scene after scene when the moral of the story was that Jango, who was separated from his wife, was now reconnected. But Jango could not be reunited with his wife, human, without the assistance of Dr. Shaw. In the same way, ladies and gentlemen, just as Dr. Scholes was the means by which Django was reunited with his wife, God has sent both you and I a mediator to reconnect us back unto himself. But just because God has sent us a mediator to reconnect us to himself doesn't mean that we are automatically reconnected with God. Therefore, the question has to be raised, how do you live in harmony with God? How is it, brother, reverend, pastor, preacher, that I reunite myself with God? How is it that I live in peace? Different 
sinners in desperate need of a savior. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, when Paul uses the word Gentile, Greek word, ethnos, he's not just talking to the Romans, but he's talking to everybody under the sound of my weak voice right now. You may have more Monday in the bank than I do. Your clothes might cost more than mine. Your haircut might be fancier than mine. Oh! <laughs> 
get out of your mind, put them up, put it in front of them. But I have to Paul say, Ryan, say this for the need the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how you live in harmony with God. You live in harmony with God by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't hear nothing else I say this morning. Hear this. Faith produces good works. Good works does not produce faith. Tweet that correctly. Faith produces good works. Good works do not produce faith. Somewhere along the lines, we got it mixed up. We try to live a life that is pleasing in the eyesight of God without Jesus Christ. And let me say this as bodacious as I possibly can. Living a life pleasing to God without Jesus Christ can not happen. You can try, but you'll fail every time. You, you can try to put aside sin, but sin is just in your nature. You need to faith in the Lord. Christ, 
but you must stand behind the cross. I didn't think I would get too many amens right there. Because I'm normally still talking about the Jesus who's able to open blinded eyes. Everybody has a shout. The Lord is still talking about the Jesus who's able to make lame men walk. Everybody has a shout. As long as you're talking about Jesus who's able to take that sickness out of your body, everybody got a shout. As long as you're talking about the Jesus that's able to open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you ain't got room enough to receive, everybody got a shout. But when you say, stand behind the cross, people say, wait a minute now. Because the cross is a symbol of suffering. The cross is a symbol of pain. The cross is a symbol of They pursue the law of righteousness. 
they did, they did not arrive at the law. Primarily because they could not keep it. They could not keep it perfectly because they didn't have the help of the Holy Spirit. Nevertheless, it didn't stop them from trying. But it didn't stop them from trying because I submit to you that they did not understand the purpose of the law of Moses. The purpose of the law of Moses. The law of Moses was not just written to tell them what they should do and shouldn't do. What they could do and what they could not do. The law of Moses was written to point them to the reality that you need a savior. God, I'm having with this death, lad, I'm my mom. Book of Galatians, Paul proclaims the purpose of the law of Moses. The book of Galatians, Paul declared that the law of Moses was just a schoolmaster that pointed us to the Lord Jesus Christ. But watch what Israel did. They read the law of Moses. But then your Bible says they stumbled over the stumbling stone. Can I give you a picture of that? It's something more you and I do all the time. You read your Bible, don't you? Don't lie to me, you're in church. You read your Bible, you come across something that your Bible says, and you say, no, it can't mean that. When you come across something that don't talk about you, it talk about somebody else who ain't mad and hallelujah. But when you get to a passage of scripture that talks about you, you say, no, that can't mean that. No, no, that can't be what he's saying. Now, he got to be saying something else, and you almost want to tear that page out your Bible, don't you? That's what Paul is saying here in the text. Do you see it? He said they stumbled over the stumbling stone. The word stumble there literally means to cut out. It means that they were reading the law of Moses, but every time they got to something about the law of Jesus Christ, they overlooked that. So because they overlooked the law of Jesus Christ, it didn't matter how close they kept the law without Christ. They could not attain righteousness. He said they stumbled over the stumbling stone. Paul oh, uses several metaphoric language here, or figurative language. The stumbling stone. Do you see that definite article there? The stumbling stone. That is simply a reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. They stumbled over the Lord Jesus Christ. They cut out the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul said they tried to receive righteousness, but because of the cut Christ. Watch that. 
Don't let me tell you. You ain't gonna believe me. Let Jesus tell you. You believe him, won't you? Jesus said, if you confess me before man, I will confess you before my father. But if you deny me before man, then I don't know you before my father. And if Jesus is your ticket into heaven and he don't know you, you can't get in. Second semester as a college student, Houston Community College, I took the hardest teacher over the campus. That's the blame. Blame started out with 30 kids, you didn't know the two. Nobody could to stay in the man's class. But he had what he called a ticket to the midterm. What he called a ticket to the midterm in college, normally you can live a life like I ain't gonna do that assignment. You know, I can pass by that one. I ain't gonna mess with that one. I ain't got to do the best on that. You can do that in college. But he had a ticket to the midterm, and in order to get, to get a ticket to the midterm, you had to have all of your previous assignments turned in. If you were missing one assignment, you couldn't take the midterm. And if you couldn't take the midterm, you might as well stop going to class because you will fail the class. Jesus Christ is our ticket into heaven. But you have to meet the requirements for him to say, come on up a little higher and rest from your labor. You got to hide behind the cross. You, you got to stand behind the cross. I know it's painful sometimes. But you got to stand behind the cross. When people talk about you going to church is foolish and listening to that preacher is foolish and you should
God was the person who provided a savior. You and I cannot provide our own sacrifice. We have to depend on God to provide the sacrifice. We have to depend on God to kill the sacrifice. And then we have to depend on God to raise the sacrifice. Did you get those three sentences? You have nothing to do with it. Nothing to depend on God. You have to rely on God's Messiah. God is the person who provided the Messiah. Behold, I, God talking. Behold, I lay in Zion. Zion is another way of saying Jerusalem. Bethlehem was a portion of Jerusalem. Christ was born in Bethlehem. I can see it on your faces when I say Romans chapter number nine. You said in your mind because you wouldn't say it to me. It's Christmas time. <laughs> he supposed to be in Luke somewhere. Ain't he? You looked over your shoulder back there, Sean said, Sean, what's wrong with this boy? He's supposed to be in Matthew somewhere. Ain't he? You looked over there, you just said, what you did? You talked to him. He's supposed to be somewhere. Something you 
know what I'm talking about myself now. I try to go where I know somebody then. Because if I go to Popeyes and my home bar behind the counter, I can order a three piece but get five. Right. So if you type with Jesus, yeah. and Jesus is type with God. Thank you. 